Say they got everything they needed? Uh, the answer to that question is yes. Okay. What would you like me to do for you today? Well, um, I guess what I wanted to do um, is to be face to face. Sure, that's helpful. Uh, and uh, again, like I said on the phone to you, I don't make decisions. Um, with buying my head and saying yes. I'd like to check both sides. I'd like to hear from the witnesses. I'd like to hear the statutes and uh, then confer with okay. people. Um, and when, um, <clears throat> the, I guess the, the main situation that started is uh, I was sitting at home and I got a phone call from um, um, Hover Round. And they said, um, we can't get a hold of your doctor and they haven't sent us anything. And I said, well, let me see if I can resolve this. And um, I said, would you please send to me, and you've seen it, uh, how many times they've called this office and couldn't get a response. How many times they left detailed messages to your office staff and never got a call back. Eight, ten, twelve times. And I said, well, when I talked to my doctor, he says it's been sent. And she said, well, we don't have it. So I said, all right. Okay, so I do have doc. I mean, if they called and left a message and my staff simply didn't record that, I would apologize. I don't have a way to know that. When we get a call, those should all be documented in the chart when we get a call. If I apologize, assuming that we got eight calls and didn't record any of them, I don't know. We did not only fax the stuff to them, but because I was afraid something like this would happen, my staff called them after we faxed it and got a verbal confirmation that they had received it. So right. to say that they hadn't gotten anything from us, that, that part's a flat out lie. The other part that they called us, I apologize if we didn't answer that. I, I don't know about and that. I have the piece of paper that shows that um, your staff called them and they confirmed uh, that they received it. Okay. okay. They called back here eight times to tell you it's at the wrong address. Your staff sent it to the wrong address. So you can check your dates. I don't know how far back. Uh, I don't have any documentation of receiving those calls, so I can't check that. I don't. Um... But you do have control of where your staff sends medical information, don't you? They sent it to the wrong address. And when they tried to correct it, they couldn't get a hold of your office to correct the address. Uh, I, I apologize for that, and if you're unhappy, you're welcome to go somewhere else. I called I mean, in. I will tell you this. Humana is the very most difficult of all the insurances we work with. Hoveround and other companies like them are also very difficult for us to work with. If, in my perfect world, I would not work with either of those entities, but I am forced to do them, so... Okay, now can I continue? Mm -hmm. So I came and um, <clears throat> talked to Hug around and I said, would you send me the times and the dates that you actually made the phone calls? Okay. Because they're going to say you didn't do it. I I'm not saying they didn't do it. Okay. All I'm saying is I don't have it documented so I can't comment on it and I apologize because maybe they called eight times and we didn't document it any one of the times. Okay. So I called in and I talked to, I guess his name is um, Brad, no, Nick, and um, he said, well, David, would you mind sending me um, the document that okay. Hover Round sent to you so that okay. I can be in a position to mm -hmm. have uh, some knowledge? And I said, sure. So he put me um, back, uh, I, I, and I got the, do the document and I called uh, your office. And uh, I told the girl, I said, um, uh, Brad, or, well, I keep calling him Brad. Nick. Nick has asked for this document, and I'd like to just forward her over to you. It's in my email. She said, well, you can't do that. And I said, well, why not? She said, well, we don't have any email in this office. <clears throat> I said, you guys make $2 million a week over there, and you don't have an email address for anybody in that office? She says, no. 
I said, well, <clears throat> I said, Brad has uh, requested this document, and I'm in bed here. I hate to have to get dressed, get in the car, and hand carry it over there. And she said, well, can you fax it? I said, no, we don't have a fax. We have an email, but, you know, we're not a company right now. We don't have a fax. She said, well, there's nothing you can do. And so finally I said to her, or what she said to me first, she said, well, you're not a very nice person. Now, I wasn't calling for friendship. I wasn't calling for a date. I was calling to relay important medical information. And so she offered that psychiatric evaluation with no degree. And uh, I said, well, I said, I think you're incompetent. <clears throat> because the address uh, is going to the wrong place. We can't seem to correct it. And you say that there's no emails over there. She hung up on me. She hung up on me, your staff. Mm -hmm. okay. You call me one day and just said, you know, you know, I need to talk to you. The next day you called and we spoke. It was a very short conversation and then my memory, which is getting much better these days of that conversation, is that um, you said you uh, evidently came into the office yesterday and uh, you um, Maybe the word was insulted, I can't remember the exact word, but you, you said some unkind or, un, you know, an insulted thing to my staff. And uh, you need to either write a one paragraph or... So let me amend that. I'm happy to keep you as a patient if you would like to stay. Um, I appreciate it if you would apologize to my staff because you treated multiple of them badly. You shouted at them, you called them names. Um, I said they were incompetent, I didn't call them any names. Um, I just said, she said, you're an unkind person, and I said, well, I think you're well, incompetent. Here's the thing. I would appreciate it if you would apologize to them. I'm not going to require you to apologize to them. It wasn't just one staff person. Multiple of them told me that you were rude and angry and loud to them, including yelling at her to her face in the waiting room. So uh, I'm not requiring you to do anything. If you choose to not do it, you don't do it. I, if that's not your interpretation, okay, that's what multiple of my staff told me. Okay, well, if when I talk so, to you, well, go ahead, I don't mean to interrupt. So, at this point, you don't have to do anything different. If you want to stay here as a patient, you may. We have not given you good service, so if you want to leave, that's fine. You, you can go somewhere else. If there's a, a future incident of you shouting and yelling at them, even if it's completely our fault, you, I will let you go as a patient. Okay. Um, can I speak and sure. retaliate and sure. rebuttal to what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I guess I need to know um, when your staff, um, this is not the first time I've had trouble with right source, my prescription people that said they can't get a hold of this office at all and that they can't get phone calls <clears> back. <throat> now, those are two separate corporations. They have nothing to do with each other. I can't verify it's 100% true because I don't know it's there, but I'm very suspicious when I get it from two different corporations and then I get it from Humana and other around. Anyway, <clears throat> here's my biggest concern. I went in and talked to um, Nick, and he listened to me. He was very per courteous, he's very polite. And he said, uh, and I'm not going to jeopardize you know, the conversation mm -hmm. there. And I said, I would appreciate it um, if we could go out and that I can confront the staff that hung up on me. He said, no problem. No problem. He and I walked out. <clears throat> he stood behind, beside me. He had the paper from Hover Around with the wrong address on it. And um, I simply said, who's the person who hung up on me? Mm -hmm. And uh, for a few minutes, a uh, second, she wouldn't stand up to it. And then finally she says, I was. I said, well, let me tell you something. <clears throat> so in a medical office, you have mentally ill people, you have elderly people, you have people with speech impediments, you have people with bad judgment, you have people with all kinds of medical um, situations. And I would think that if you can't handle a situation, you refer it up to the next level. Because, and Nick said to me, that's where that should have gone. He says, I'm the one that usually gets those crazy phone calls. But I said, you didn't. You just hung up on me. And I said, I think that's unprofessional. I think that's very unprofessional. And for a uh, medical 
uh, facility to do that to anybody. Um, you know, if, if someone's coming in crazy with a gun and walking around, of course, you've got to take certain action. But you called me and you simply said, um, you apologize uh, or you need to go somewhere else. And then when I said to you, well, did you check the other side of the story? You said, no. I said, did you talk to Nick? You said, said, no. What would you like me to do at this point? <clears throat> Here's my concern. Here's my concern. The position that you hold as a doctor, you have taken a sacred oath not to do any damage. Your obligation is to me. It's not to that office staff. You're mixed up. You took an oath to me. Now, you certainly have, as the owner of the corporation or whatever, you have administrative responsibilities or whatever. Um, I don't know if you talked to that staff and said, you know, don't hang up on our people. For God's sakes, refer it on up. That's, you can't do that. So the administration of this facility, I seriously question. Then you're welcome to go somewhere else. And I seriously question that you didn't gather all the facts and were willing to kick me out of here without gathering those facts. Then you're welcome to go somewhere else? I know I am. I was welcome not to even come in here today. Yep. You're not giving me permission or you're not giving me authority that I don't already have. What has happened since you're indicated that you're not going to be my doctor because I'm not going to apologize to someone who hangs up on me at a medical facility. And um, when you said, I'm not going to be your doctor, you certainly put me in an extremely hurtful position. I called Medtronic, threw their $4,000 machine in the trash, because I can't get insulin for it without you. I can't get medical supplies for it without you. Here's the thing. Well, no finish. Thank you. I called Hover Round. Said, you get what you needed? Said, yep. Said, cancel it. My doctor is not going to support me. He's not going to give me information. I'm going to be out in the dark ages here looking for another doctor if I find another doctor. And I called uh, Right Source. I take 10 meds a day. I can't get those anymore. I told him to cancel them. So I'm not on insulin. I don't have any um, disability, heart, thinning, whatever. It's all gone because you pulled the trigger too quick. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. So I am making the decision that I feel that uh, you're an excellent doctor. My health has never been better. Never been better. You're an excellent doctor. An administrator, I don't know, you, you act like a bishop or a state president uh, where you're the judge, jury, and executioner. Homie don't roll that way anymore. You needed to check both sides of that and you never said to me, David, what's the story? You never said to me, David, what's the story? So I was already in a repentant process of making restitution. I'm uncomfortable with that. Okay, I can see why you would be. Okay. So I am going to quit not having you as a doctor, and it has nothing to do with your medical. Nothing to do with sure. your medical. You need to be happy with both. Understandable. Okay. So, you know, I've been out in the real world, and I have supervised people, and I know how the real world works. And I would have never done what you did. I certainly would have gathered all the information. I've hired and fired a lot of people, and I've turned people in and not turned people in for child abuse, and I've run six, eight million dollar facilities. You don't call somebody up and say, I'm not going to be your doctor if you don't apologize and you, and you don't even get the information. I find that irresponsible. I'm sorry, I didn't talk with Nick first. Okay. I should have done that. All right. Well. I don't want to leave on a bad note. I, you've given me my time to be able to speak. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I hope I haven't been discourteous. I've just tried to be upfront and straight with um, you know the way I feel. But um, you know, I don't have those supplies and those things in my life anymore because of what you did. So thank you for listening to me. Sure, appreciate it. Um, I'd know. like to get a copy, if I could, of my medical record sure. and hand carry it. I know it might take you a day or two or three or whatever, but if your staff can simply call me and just simply say it's here, could you come and pick it up? We will do it. I appreciate it. Thank okay. you, Doctor. Good luck getting sent out tomorrow.